Can you dig it? It is, you know what time it is. It's eight o'clock on the third Thursday of the month. That means Lowell Train is pulling in. This week we got a heavy band, Heavy NECA. They're gonna come to us with some uh, classic rock and roll power trio from Peabody, Massachusetts. It is uh, Lowell Train. I'm your host, your conductor, your engineer, Maximus Sack, and we are about to take off with Heavy NECA. Can you dig it? You better be able to dig it. We are taking off now. The train is leaving the station. Lowell Train, coming at you. Let's make it happen. Let's get another tune. Inside. <laughs> 
Next song is called Heavy Necker.
just can't keep away. I'm a tiny body, and now I'm fucking up. You're too much for me, but we're having trouble. Thank you. <laughs> In case you didn't catch, we're Heavy Necker. We're from Peabody, Massachusetts. It's a pleasure to be part of this project tonight. Here in Lowell, Massachusetts, Milltown. Milltown, USA. You know, being from Peabody, we're not strangers to mills. You know, there's some mills in Peabody. It's not the same kind of mill. There's, there's tanner mills. Would they call them mills? Keith, do they call them mills? Did you mention we're from Peabody? Yeah, we're definitely from, we're Peabody. from Peabody. We're definitely from, yeah, give me some. Get a good shot of this. <laughs> That's what it looks like when you come from Peabody. It's a strong bond. But anyway, Peabody, in case any of you Lowell folk, or anybody else that's watching, because, you know, where is this going to go, you know what I mean? It's going to mean really well. <laughs> anyway, Peabody has mills where they make leather. I'm not wearing leather tonight, but being from Peabody, I'm kind of, like, obliged to wear leather. I'm failing, but I'm in, I'm in Lowell tonight, and I think we have time for one more song before our break. Yes? Two more songs. Okay. We're going to do two more songs then. This one's called Master. Battle, but not the world. Bruce, the mirror, and sky. 
All right, babies. We've been through about a half hour of this stuff now. We're going to take a little break. Mitchell Samillion's going to sit down with Heavy Necker. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I'm just going to take a break, get to know the men behind the music, the power trio Heavy Necker from Peabody, Massachusetts. I'll see you on the other end of this break, the other end of this tunnel. Not a Freudian slip there, but hey, Heavy Necker interview segment coming up now. This is Mitchell Samillion coming in at you live here in Lowell, the Lowell Train. And today we're here with Heavy Nigger. Heavy Nigger. And we're going to take some time, interview them. They've been jamming. They're giving us that great music, giving us that great sound. And we're just going to get into it. So I, myself, and Mitchell, nice to meet you guys. I'm here with uh, Chris. Chris. Mike D. Mike D. Keith. Keith. And uh, we're just going to kick it for some minutes, if you guys don't mind. Just we don't to, mind. Uh, 
Sorry, you do not let mind. the people know who you guys are. So, Heavy Nigga, how'd you guys get that name? Uh, we, I don't honestly. They, they, the original name was like it was like the Flappers, which the is like flappers. Ooh, the Flappers, the 30s? Yeah, the 1920s. The 20s, okay, women. yeah. And when I was like introduced into the band, I wasn't original. I wasn't the original drummer. Okay, were you guys smoking no. cigarettes with filters and stuff? Yeah. Like with gloves and. <laughs> And uh, I was like, that's a stupid name. I hated wow. that name. Wow, okay. So like, I went home. We hadn't played out or anything at the time. Like, okay. yeah, it, we it were still, still like, like getting right, it together. Stages. All right, getting yeah. it yeah, marinated. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I went home and I just, I thought of like a bunch of different names. And one, another name for a flapper is like a heavy necker. Really? So heavy I that necker. Out. Yeah, it's yeah. like a girl so, who hangs on like different guys' necks every night, like a like a very promiscuous woman okay, so from that era. Every day you can catch her. Like, every yeah, day yeah, yeah. There you go. Heavy so, yeah. Threw That's that it. out there, just stuck, and we just kept it. Kept it. I, I, I remember he had like a like a notebook, like the size of like the palm of a hand. I love okay. those and he had yeah, and so he cool. had like a bunch of names, and we were all like, nope. Nope, nope. That one, it's kind of interesting. Right. And I don't even remember like being like, that's it. Let's call our band that. That yeah. never happened. We were like, ah, that's all right. And then we just stuck with it. Right. Like there was nothing better at the time. <laughs> okay. Did, 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 did he give you guys anything. like a reason why you came up with the titles? Like, no, or, no. Or, no. I had a, a big old list of them. And really? I just like named them out and I was just did your homework. I remember yeah. one other one and the other one was Spliff. No, it was Lula. Woola, uh, yeah, yeah, it was Woola. 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 I'm pretty sure Spliff was Woola. also on there too. Hey, Mike, why don't, you, why don't you explain what a Woola is? I, I honestly, I don't even know anymore. It's like <laughs> it's it's some sort of cigarette with some sort of drug in it. I don't remember the drug. Preferably marijuana. Marijuana, that was a harder drug. <laughs> might have been like a, like a, like a chronic type thing. Okay. But sure. I honestly, wow, you're gonna have to look that up. Right. Being bashful. He was being right. bashful. This okay. is like years and years. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, so how, how long has the Heavy Neckers been jamming? Um, it's probably like 2011. Two th five years now. 2011. Yeah. That was a great time. That was a great year, huh? Oh, let me tell you, it was a fantastic year. There yeah. was a lot of in and outs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 2011. I feel like that's when, like, the, like, so where did you guys start recording before I... I, I where did we start recording? Well, yeah, like how... Or, like, when did we start writing music? Yeah, writing music and... As, as a whole. Um... Well, so with, with him yeah. in the picture, it didn't start until like 2013. 13. Um, but in 2011, um, we, with the original drummer that we had, this, this, this kid named Grant, Okay. we started kind of like playing around like pretty much immediately after we formed. We just kind of got together. I had a couple of songs that I was tossing around and pretty much how we wrote songs then and how we still write songs now is like somebody will have like an idea yeah. or being like I want to write a song that has like this vibe like you know uh, we'll hear a song that right. we like and we're like oh that's awesome you know right. how it does this like right. let's take that idea and make a song out of it of not necessarily like make the same song right. but like take a piece of it and be like let's see Expand what we do that. with that right 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 that I love and, uh, that's great I love that you guys need to take notes <laughs> heavy neckers yeah we uh Originally, it was me and, and Keith, and we were in a band with these with these three other guys. No, uh, two other guys, and it was gonna be like a metal thing. But then we pretty quickly realized that, that we, me and Keith, didn't really want to play metal. Metal. We wanted to play like more rock, a little bit more on the on on the the, the boogie side of things. Ooh. Um, so okay. we split from those guys, and those guys are actually still really good friends of ours. Yeah. They, they play they play a metal. Do you guys ever do any joint concerts, joint shows? Every once in a while it happens, but it's it's kind of like two different scenes. So like, okay. uh, we'll make like an event out of it whenever we do it, just because like people in in the scene. Um, there's some people that are members of both the metal community and the rock community. Right, right. Some people are only member of one. Right. Every once in a while they'll mash it's together. Such a shame, right? We I like to see the blurred lines. Oh yeah, yeah. You know? Well, 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 I asked that because um, I wanted to also ask, like, recording, how do you guys, do you guys record more than you write, or that's like... No, you guys, I don't think, yeah. no, definitely not. You guys are, are you guys heavy into recording, or are you just more in, in, concerned with performing? Well, I recently we just, we, we last year we recorded uh, two songs, yeah. and we just put, actually put it out on a seven-inch demo, it's called Transcend, and there's like a... Seven-inch, you guys still do vinyl? Yeah. It's like yeah. a side oh, A and B oh, type yeah. thing. Yeah, vinyl massive now. No, I know, I know vinyl's massive, but like you guys are distributing your own yeah. mm -hmm. vinyls. All by ourselves. Heavy well, necker vinyl. Right I, now, I, yeah. I, need, I need one. I need, I need hey, one. Hey, again for uh, the yeah. gun, man. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, I, you know, 2011, you know, that, that, yeah, that yeah. era, that was like when YouTubers and like 
the online independent artistry started exploding, right? That's when we it's started actually to fun, funny you mentioned that. Yeah. We used to do a thing, because when we first started, we didn't know anybody, man. Like, you get to put out music, you get to record, you get to perform, you get to do all these things that bands do when you meet the people yeah. that, that kind of open that door for you. Yeah. But when you're a bunch of kids, you know, uh, right. Right. waiting outside for somebody to buy you cigarettes and like you know right. drinking underage at your friend's house right. on the weekends and right. like playing no, in struggle. your mom's living room. Yeah, around. yeah, no, that's struggle. It's you know you don't have those resources. So what we used to do is I had this little camera, mm -hmm. and every time we came up with like uh, we did like two new songs. Every time we came up with like two new songs that right. we could play from start to finish without like messing up messing, too badly. Right, right, right. We'd we'd uh, film ourselves just like. It was so, so grassroots. It was like one angle, some kid sitting on the couch while I was playing. Usually yeah. me. It, usually him, because he wasn't in the group yet. OK. You weren't drumming yet? I wasn't playing drums. Okay. Not yet. So I was just there. Um, and we'd have like either us playing the song, and then there would be like some kind of weird segment. Because like it would always be like us playing music, but it would also be just like us and a couple friends like hanging out. Hanging out. So we'd be cool. laughing about something, right. or, or whatever happened. There'd right. be like an inside joke going around. Of course. So our YouTube videos, I had like really, really basic editing skills. It'd be like, oh, like the screen would spin, and then and it would then be like the us playing. Yeah. And then, and then, it, and then it would, the would like spin backwards, right, and it would right. be like me with like a funny hat right, saying right. something, and then it would be like another song. Right. The dissolve. And that's yeah. still up there. It's yeah. embarrassing. Thing, honestly, it to watch. Cool. It's classic, though. I think. No, it's, no, for sure. You know, and that's. I think around that time, that's when it was. It was not hip, but people were starting to understand. Like, we can do this. And, yeah, man. And exactly. people can actually. will actually enjoy it. the social networks that are being more and more. It was widespread. cool. It was cool because at the time, I remember thinking that like. It was something that made us a little bit more legitimate than the other people that were around trying to do the same thing. Okay. Because we'd be hanging out, you know, doing whatever, and people would always be like, oh man, like, I want to start a band, I do this, I'm like really good, whatever. But you'd never see anything, you'd never see them doing right. anything. Right. And you'd be like, yeah, I do this. And you'd be thinking, like, okay, well, I'm thinking about them. They're probably thinking the same about me. Right. So, like, here's what we do. And there's, and there's it, a physical, yeah, right, exactly. Ever since then, thing that you can view, yeah, and it's the heavy, oh, oh, whoever you are, right? Yeah, yeah. and, and like ever since then, it's case. always been like a, a thing that's very important to us. Where like, you know, we do what we do, and we try to every in every way possible, like bring it out and do it in the most genuine way possible. Yeah, you know, um, whether it's on stage or if we're or if we're recording, like yeah. you know, just audio. Believe or, it or not, that really transcends into the energy that you know listeners like. You know, for sure. When it, whenever you're really trying to, not you're all. I wouldn't say you're all, but you know, a genuine. Yeah. You know that stroke, the drum, whatever. You, see, you know, vocals. That's always a big thing for uh, the the final product. Yeah. You know, I I would say you know. But um, as Keith was saying, we recently released the songs on the seven inch. We just. Uh, what was that? On Monday, we played a release show for it, actually. Oh, so, so what um, is the project called? Uh, well, it doesn't really have a title. We just okay. have our, our, we have like a new logo on it done by this guy um, from England called Matt Wilkins. He does logos for everybody right. from yeah. like Cadaver, Dead Feathers, all these people that are like uh, much more established. They tour internationally. Right, right. We found him. We loved his aesthetic and we hired him to do us a logo and we did, we went all out with it and he, and it's we couldn't be more satisfied okay. with the work yeah. he did for That's us. Great to hear. It's Very great cool. To hear. Okay. Um, so, any anything in the in the box for upcoming? You know, any great shows? Any new an album? Perhaps we've been working on a full length. Um, yeah. For when did we go and record that? Like last month, two months ago. A couple months ago, at the very at the very most, we started. Uh, we recorded two songs, and then I think we have more time in September, so we're just kind of. Kind of doing it piece by piece. Okay. Uh, it's pretty much the only way we really can with all the different schedules and stuff. Right, right. But sounds cool. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I love being in the recording studio. We have yeah. the guy, Vice, who he's with New Alliance, and he does he did our seven inch. New Alliance is a studio is in Cambridge. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay. He did our seven inch, and he did a cover song. Uh, we did a Hendrix cover tune. Mm -hmm. um, and he recorded that too, and it's been, I mean, we all love working with him. It's okay. Like super easy to So, Keith, you haven't spoken much. I haven't gotten a word. <laughs> so, wh how would you define the music of Heavy Neckers? Um, well, uh, the influences we have, I'd say, like, my biggest influence is, like, the Rolling Stones, Hendrix, uh, the Beatles. Okay. That's my big three. Word. Um, Mellow. But I would just say rock and roll in general is yeah. what we're going for. Ooh. Right? Pushing the culture 70s. forward, right? That's 
pushing the culture forward. Um, social networks before, I know we're not closing anytime, but how can people find your music if they want to listen to you guys online? They can find us on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel that we're, you know, putting a little bit more effort into becoming more present in, like, you know, live footage. So no doppelganger, doppelgangers, right? There's no, oh, no other no, no, heavy no. neckers out there. That's one of the things we made sure. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. If you Google our band name, it's all stuff about us. Okay, great. Which is yeah, a I love big that. success yeah, yeah, right yeah. away. Right, right, right. Um, you can't get any yeah, no mistake. Yeah, right, yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> But uh, we have we're, we have a YouTube channel, we yeah. have an Instagram page, we have a Facebook page, we have Twitter, we have all that stuff going on. It's um, heavy neck, I camp. like that straight, so straightforward. Band Trying to get probably the band. easiest one. Okay. Um, you can stream our music for free. You can pay whatever you want for it too. Okay. We don't we don't ask for like a specific amount. You can pay what you want for it. Because if you want a physical copy, you can come to the show. Future of distribution? Did I hear the right? right no, I'm just you, you, right, can, you right, can come yeah. to a show and, and, and pay a set price for a physical copy because yeah. we'd like to push that because okay. we're dudes who grew up, you know, going and hanging out at a record store and, and, and buying physical copies of stuff. I love it. That's mine. But we don't want somebody to be discouraged to hear our music if you can only, like, hear it all the time. You have to pay for it. Right. You know? Like, whatever. We live in that age where it's if you want something, right? you can get it. If you really but want But if you want to help us out, you can also do that, real, too. A real, a real lover of the music that, you know, I'd, I'd advise you guys to, you know, contribute whatever you can to whatever artist that you appreciate. It doesn't have to only be the heavy neckers. Even if the guys got some great jams. Um... I had a question, and I don't know why I can't remember it right now, man. Um, I know you guys said Hendrix was, was a cover you guys did. Yeah. What band or song can you guys cover from now till the end of time and never feel like you're being monotonous? Like, what? what is it? Like... Well, we've done a couple of covers over the years, but it's Your like a thing. Story. I don't think. We and you guys have, have individuals. You guys should sure. be individual because I know you guys might have different, sure, which sure. is why you guys are a band, different elements coming together. But that's right? usually the problem when we're trying to record a cover is we'll all throw a, a different agree. song in, yeah. and, and nobody wants to do the other person's yeah. song. Really, so it's, it's really hard so to come uh, up with something. Can that we can we go from a uh, from left? What to right? like songs that we haven't covered that before? You, oh, oh yeah, you, 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 you don't have to cover, but like personally, what song or band like? What what vibe can you guys cover from now to the end of time and never feel like you're being monotonous? We'll start with you, please. I would love to cover a Beatles song. A Beatles song? Any song. You know, All right, any yeah. song? I think it's Easy Top song would be really cool. Easy Top? Yeah, it's something we top. had for a while. Um, it's it's kind of an interesting question just because like there there are tons of bands out there that I that I love that are a big part of like how I developed as a musician okay. and how I feel like we've developed as a band. Right. But at the same time, like when you're covering a song, like it's not just as simple as playing somebody's song. If you're gonna do it, you know, with heart and you're gonna do it right, you have to think about like what voices you have involved. We're a trio. We have one bass. We have one guitar. You know, one and a half voices. I'll say because he kind of just does backup vocals. And, and, and drums, you know, we're not gonna cover like a Duke Ellington tune right. because we have, three, we have three bodies. Of, right, right, you right. know what I mean? But I mean, th w w this is why I ask it because it's kind of difficult. I had yeah. a few guys in the last show and they were they were all scout like yeah. they didn't know what to, what to choose. So I guess if I if I had to, if I had to choose uh, something that I feel like we could probably pull off just because we have what we have, right. I would say probably something by like Cream, like Eric Clapton. I, I Eric would personally. Clapton. Eric Clapton was in Cream, man. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, but Eric Clapton, I mean, like, oh, for sure. Eric Clapton, I haven't heard that name. Slow hand, man. He's Slow a smooth guy. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> you guys are in for some good stuff. Second half. Max Massac, what's going on? Mitchell Similian, I'm here with the Heavy Neckers. It's good to meet you guys, man. Me too. All right. Yeah. All right. You guys stay tuned. Low train, we're here. We're never going to leave. Take your ticket, take a seat. Sit back, relax. You got popcorn, your drinks, whatever. We're hitting it heavy, man. Second half. Max Massac, what's going on? It's Mitchell. Woo! All right. I hope you're charged from your break. I don't care what you did. If you ate, you drank, you watched the interview, you went to the bathroom, you spaced out for a bit. I'm your host, Max Massac, and we are back, back boarding the Lowell train, and we're heading off to the final uh, trimester of this episode. Uh, it's Heavy Necker in the studio. It's the third Thursday of the month. That means we're live. It's any other time. You're either hallucinating or you're watching a replay. Lowell Train coming at you soon. <laughs>
to place a man by eye. My dreams of living free. Someday I never think I'll get to see. So far, I'm Me back up to a place I wanna be. I'll fall down, out and round my This next one.
Oh. Oh, you're feeling that, baby? You like that, huh? Here's Lowell Train, and we are here with Heavy NECA. I'm your host, Maximus Sack. Check it out. I'm your host, Maximus Sack, conforming to the 180 rule of TV. Never enter from two ways at the same time. I think that's the way that rule goes. Anyway, we're done with this episode. I'm done with this episode. I'm going to go hang out somewhere in Lowell. Lowell's a rich oyster, and it is my oyster. Whatever. We're done with this episode. This month, of course, was Heavy Necker. Great band from Peabody, Massachusetts. They wanted me to mention that way too many times. But anyway, 
Peabody's got a great music scene. Lowell's got a great music scene. I want to thank everybody in the crew that helped out tonight. Aaron King, uh, Mitchell Similian, who did the interview and is probably doing camera right now. I want to thank the newbies. I guess there's a guy named Sela and maybe Ruth. I'm forgetting all this. Pat Meany, our magician on the sound board. Uh, he's recording all this stuff, multi-track, doing stuff I cannot do. Steve Maddock, Britt Bogner. Uh, did I mention Aaron King? That guy's a... He's, he's, he, he helped out a bit. Uh, Steve Maddock, I mentioned him, right? I must have mentioned him. Uh, I don't know, whoever else helped out. And uh, I want to thank myself because I did an excellent job with this hosting again. I am Maximus Sack. This is Lowell Train, you can try Heavy Necker. Check us out next month. We're going to be doing some stuff that I don't even know about yet because I am your not ready for real time host. I'll see you later. Take care, babies. Peace out. take you back in time, Lowell.
one more for you. Let's hit it. In the sky, but it's here to rub your eyes and shake your ears away. And then the twinkle of a losing diamond that arrive on time and rock this town tonight. You are the line for you to look down, sound To a group.